at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker and I'm Karina Garcia. A suspect from Rio Grande City was arrested by Victoria County Sheriff's deputies Tuesday. 31 year old Irvin Rich was arrested in the 200 block of North Bridge Street for violation of parole smuggling of persons. Rich is in the Victoria County Jail in lieu of $50,000 bond. Tuesday night, Victoria Police responded to a home in the 300 block of Sam Houston Drive in reference to a fight. Officers found two victims with non-life-threatening injuries. They also found three adults and one child forcibly entered the home and assaulted two adults and a child. 21-year-old George Flores, 19-year-old Karen Lozano, and 42-year-old Terry Sanchez are charged with burglary of habitation, reckless bodily injury, and engaging in organized criminal activity. The three suspects are in the Victoria County Jail in lieu of $40,000 bond each. Investigators say this is an isolated incident. Tuesday afternoon, around 3.30, Victoria Police arrested 38-year-old Andrew Rojas. He's accused of driving drunk on Del Mar when he hit another vehicle. The driver in the other vehicle was taken to the hospital as a precaution. Now, Rojas crashed his truck into a tree near Del Mar and North Street. He was arrested on scene. Rojas currently sits at the Victoria County Jail in lieu of $500 bond. 22 people injured and three armed people detained in Kansas City following a shooting that occurred just after the end of the championship parade and rally for the Kansas City Chiefs. Authorities say at least one person is dead and a spokesperson at the University Health Hospital says multiple people are hospitalized with unknown injuries. 11 of those are children. Nine have gunshot wounds. We have confirmed there is uh, one deceased person our gunshot wound total has went up to 22. We do have three persons detained and under investigation for today's incident. Authorities also say the motive is not believed to be terrorism. Up to a million people had gathered in the Kansas City for the event. Former Victoria ISD board member Brett Baldwin wants to serve as state representative for District 30. Baldwin is a development consultant. He says school vouchers are the wrong way to go. Baldwin also does not have the big name endorsements that some of his rivals have. A lot of those endorsement evaluations or decisions were, were made before I even got into the race. And so I understand that that's going to be the, the situation. I also understand that I'm going to be behind and as my Coach from uh, in high school, Coach So Simpson or Alan Waddell would tell me, we play like you're behind. I don't care if you're up 70 to nothing. You get after it and you compete, and that's what I'm planning to do. Friday, we'll have District 30 Republican candidate Jeff Bachnight live. The Republican primary winner will face Democrat Stephanie Basham in the November election. She's running unopposed in the Democratic primary election. Let's take a first look at your forecast with First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Pettis. Mac, I think a lot of our viewers, if they were writing about today's weather, they would go, I heart this weather. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure there was a lot of I hearts out there this evening. Hopefully uh, you all had a great uh, Valentine's evening. Well, here's what we're looking at, folks. Uh, this is Future Tracker telling us how much rain we're going to get over the next five days, and it looks like We've got a solid one inch of rain over our area. Uh, heaviest activity will actually be down in deep south Texas. The rain will begin tomorrow and get heaviest on Friday. We'll be talking more about that and how much we're going to get and where we're going to get it. All that in just a moment. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Mac, thank you. The Secretary of Homeland Security is impeached. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is sent to stand trial in the Senate after the House impeached him by a single vote Tuesday. Republicans accused him of violating immigration laws. He's expected to be acquitted by Democrats. The impeachment vote follows a similar one that failed last week. Steve Scalise's return from medical leave is how it passed this time by one vote. U.S. Representative District 27 Michael Cloud voted to impeach Secretary Mayorkas. Congressman Cloud said today in a statement, quote, We should be willing to use every tool at our disposal to end this border disaster, and I look forward to working with my colleagues to do just that, unquote. 
Now, the number of people crossing illegally into the United States from Mexico decreased in the past month. U.S. Customs and Border Protection says illegal crossings are down 50 percent from December 2023 to January of this year. They say the drop is largely a product of seasonal migration patterns, which are expected to turn back toward higher migration patterns in the early spring. The Lakewood Church shooting suspect had a long documented history of mental illness, but despite her record, 36 year old Janice Moreno was able to legally purchase the gun. Wally Canciana, Moreno's ex mother in law, says Moreno was diagnosed with schizophrenia. She also believes Sunday shooting could have been preventable had there been a background check, otherwise known as a red flag law in place during the time of the weapons purchase. Houston police say Moreno's son was by her side when she entered the church and shot her AR-15 into a crowd of people. Her seven-year-old son was shot in the head and continues to fight for his life tonight. Authorities in Austin are still at work today at the St. David's North Austin Medical Center where a vehicle crashed into the emergency room. The driver was pronounced dead at the scene. Five others, three adults and two juveniles were injured. One of the victims was transported to another hospital and is in stable condition. Another was treated for injuries and then released. Authorities cannot comment on the status of the pediatric patients. Investigation is in its early and preliminary stages. However, there is no indication at this time that this is an intentional act, nor does it indicate that the driver suffered from a medical episode. The driver of the crash vehicle is identified as 58 year old Michelle Holloway. Eight days later, an Amber Alert is still active out of Houston. The victim is one year old Noah Johnson. He was last seen wearing a blue shirt and flower print pants. The suspect is 38 year old Camilla Johnson. The suspect is driving a white 2007 GMC Yukon license plate number STM 7097. Call 911 with information. Yoakum ISD board members voted this week to accept chaplains as volunteers on their campuses. The Yoakum Herald Times reports the measure takes effect March 1st. This was in response to a new law passed by the Texas legislature. School districts must first vote on whether they will allow chaplains to serve in that role. Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley is coming to San Antonio Friday. KSAT reports Haley will be hosting a meet and greet event. Haley's visit comes less than three weeks before the March 5th primary in Texas, where she is seeking a win to keep her presidential hopes alive. Before her visit to San Antonio, Haley will attend a rally in Dallas on Thursday. Texans in rural cities are worried that the Fed's broadband expansion plan will have a painfully slow rollout. You can read the Texas Tribune article on our website, CrossroadsToday.com. Here are some of the he top headlines you can read in the Port Lavaca Wave. The Wilkins Alumni Incorporated will be celebrating Black History Month on February 24th, providing an afternoon of music, poetry, and theater at the Main Street Theater. Plus, the Veterans Land Board is encouraging people to spread the love to veterans in their yearly Valentine's for Veterans program. You can read these stories and more at theportlavacawave.com. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell so when you're on YouTube, you can see Crossroads Today. And stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 10. An inmate at a Florida prison is dead after an exposure to fentanyl over the weekend. Also ahead, staff at an aquarium in South Carolina are trying to figure out how a female stingray got pregnant by herself.
Florida, an inmate is dead after seven inmates, a nurse, detention officers and a paramedic were exposed to fentanyl over the weekend. Detention staff at the jail says inmates were treated for symptoms of fentanyl exposure in two different pods. The inmates got fentanyl from another inmate who swallowed small baggies of the drug as he was arrested. When the drugs passed, they were distributed to other inmates. An inmate just released this week says it forced a jail lockdown and eventually started a riot. Checking my food, somebody might have put it in my food or, you know, just taking a little bite of it and then waiting an hour, you know, and they're like, oh, hurry up with your trays. And I'm like, well, I don't want to die like pod six, you know. Guards found a 37-year-old inmate unresponsive, and he died at the hospital. Pregnant women who get vaccinated for COVID-19 can provide their infants protection from the disease. A new study says infants of boosted mothers had significantly higher protection from symptomatic COVID-19 infection in the first six months after birth. COVID-19 is dangerous for newborns and young infants. Even healthy infants are vulnerable and are at risk for severe disease. Any day now, staff members at an aquarium in North Carolina expect to celebrate the birth of babies born to their stingray. However, there's something fishy about a mystery pregnancy with no daddy. In Charlotte end up pregnant when no male stingray has ever been in her tank. The $64,000 question, who's the daddy? We think Charlotte is her own daddy. Staff at the Aquarium and Shark Lab by Team Echo in North Carolina are so bonded with Charlotte, she lets them caress her. When they found a lump, they feared it was cancer. An ultrasound proved otherwise. There's a baby. Several babies, but how? She has always been a single ray. She needs ray tinder. The most likely explanation? Something called parthenogenesis. I've been calling it do-it-yourself reproduction. Do it sort of a virgin birth. The female's egg becomes an embryo without fertilization. But there's another far less likely theory. Two male sharks that were placed in the tank. This is Mo and this is Larry, named after you know who. What's matter with you? How dare you strike a mother with an infant in his arms? The staff found bites on Charlotte and male sharks tend to bite during mating. The aquarium plans to do DNA testing when the babies are born. The Denver Zoo recently used DNA to determine who was the daddy of this four-month-old orangutan, and they had Maury Povich announce the results. Barani, you are the father. The aquarium may not yet know. How'd that baby get here? But if immaculate conception is the best theory... So we're telling everyone don't drink the water from this tank? Tell that to the diver snorkeling in it. Genie Mouse, <laughs> CNN, oh, oh. New York. Uh, how do you find? How do you uh, follow the Stooges? Well, we'll try this. Here's a look at some <laughs> of the top headlines you'll find in the Quero Record. The Quero Record held a DeWitt County candidate forum, and DeWitt County hopes to qualify for the Rural Law Enforcement Grant Program. Read these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com. In what has become a tradition, residents at Twin Pines Nursing Home in Victoria celebrated Valentine's Day with roses, sweet treats, and a lot of love. Residents and staff shared stories and good memories. Residents J.R. Vargas and Eliba Carabajal say they're in love. I want to wish my love a happy Valentine's Day and many more, hopefully, together. <laughs> Residents celebrated two Twin Pines couples who married about 60 years ago. Carl and Mary Meeks married 68 years ago, and Erwin and Shirley Griffith married 58 years ago. Congratulations to those newlyweds. <laughs> and here's your real poll tonight. You can scan that QR code on your screen to vote. The question is, how do you share your love for someone on Valentine's Day? Is it writing love letters, giving flowers, cooking a romantic dinner, or going out? According to our results, it looks like 64% of our voters went out tonight for Valentine's Day. Mm. Mm. My wife and I are two out of four on that. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, congratulations, Thank you very much, <laughs> and thank you for voting. Mac? 
Yes, I saw the restaurants were pretty busy tonight, so hopefully you had reservations and you didn't have a problem. But the evening was lovely. Right about now, we're at 59 degrees, and that's fairly warm, I'm folks. I mean, yesterday or the day before, we were down to 40 at this hour. 69 was our high, 45 was the overnight low this morning. Tomorrow morning, we're only going to be looking at temperatures probably about 59, 60 is a low temperature. Clouds have rolled in. When does the rain get here? We'll be talking about that after this. Well, good evening, everybody. You might have noticed the clouds just got thicker and thicker during the day, and now we're really getting it because this is part of what we call the subtropical jet, or some of you might call it the Pineapple Express. You might even call it the Atmospheric River uh, because it is coming up from the Pacific. It's bringing us all this very warm air aloft. Aloft is up, up high, and of course, at the surface, we're getting the Gulf air coming in with the uh, uh, Gulf Southeast wind. So there you see it coming up. So it's uh, setting the stage because now what we need is something to lift it up um, into the higher atmosphere, cool it down and make it rain. Well, that is the frontal system that's gonna be rolling into our area as soon as tomorrow. So all of these things are coming together. Tonight, uh, we're looking at 59 to 60 degrees as low temperatures, not in the 40s. So when you get out in the morning, won't be that bad. And then we're looking at 69 to 70 as a high temperature, even though we've got overcast skies. Now you're gonna see a few sprinkles, uh, light rain. It'll be very humid tomorrow, but then it's uh, late in the day, probably after sundown, when the rain actually begins from the south. Now here's the southeast winds that punch up the Gulf air and that makes it quite humid at the lower uh, portion of the atmosphere where you and I walk around. The higher portions of the atmosphere is now is where that stream is going overhead. And so Future Tracker will tell you what's going to happen in the next few hours. There you see it, uh, the cloud deck gets thicker and thicker all day. Then we go to Thursday and then we go into Friday and there you see the rain. So while we might have light stuff uh, on Thursday, the heavier stuff comes in on Friday, that's Friday morning, and then we go to Friday afternoon. And in this particular storm system, the irony of it all is the heaviest activity is gonna be down along the Rio Grande. Uh, they're gonna be getting probably three to five inches of rain. Now, here's our front coming in, and uh, it's actually gonna also serve to push it out of the way <clears throat> and get us some cooler temperatures as that drifts through. So we've got quite a bit of activity happening here 
in the weather office now uh, <coughs> and future tracker you can see how we looked uh, for how much rain we're going to get out of this at this point in time in victoria we're looking at a solid inch of rain but down south three to five inches of rain in the valley they may have a little bit of a flooding problem here's our front it's coming out of the plains going to be dropping through oklahoma and then sometime on friday it starts rolling into texas the two are going to combine to produce quite a bit of shower activity along the Texas coast and especially way down deep south. So let's take a look at your day planner for tomorrow. Looking for Port Lavaca, cloudy skies, only getting up to about 72. <clears throat> and then cloudy skies all day, getting up to 73 in Quero. But then the rain will be light late Thursday night. Heaviest is on Friday and then clearing up on Saturday morning by Saturday afternoon we should be good. In fact, it'll be rather crisp as the north wind gives us temperatures only in the 50s early over the weekend. That's your seven day forecast, reminding everybody we do have a QR code. We'd love for you to scan that, put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Zach with sports. Two area teams doing things they haven't done in about 20 years. Stick around, I'll have that coming up in sports. We have had a lot of teams do things they haven't done in years. Incredible turnarounds have put some of these guys in the playoffs, starting out in Yoakum. The Yoakum Bulldogs have their first winning season in 18 years and their first playoff appearance in 20 years, and they just finished second behind a tough Edna Cowboy team that was already favored to win the district. The Bulldogs only won four games last year and went three and nine in district, but they did a total 180 this year. And Yoakum alum turned coach Trevante Heights proud of the guys, but not shocked. I'm super proud of these guys. And I mean, it's not it's not to a surprise because these kids actually put in the work to get the results that they it was a lot of a lot of yelling, a lot of extra practices, you know, a lot of film watching, a lot of a lot of coming together towards the end of the season that but these dudes put the work in and they they bought in and they dedicated their time. Their game will be against Marion. It will take place in Wyman.
And that was this morning when I got to speak with the guys. Later this evening, they did what they've done all year, and that's give back to the community. They visited a nursing home. They played bingo, gave socks and blankets. Coach Taylor says it just feels good to help someone else. Another program having a historic season for their program. Well, that would be the Bloomington Bobcats for the first time in at least two decades. They have claims to a district title. However, they did finish in a three way tie. So to decide the seedings, they flipped the coin. Schulenberg is the first seed. Bloomington is second. Flatonia gets the third seed. But what a turnaround over at the Bloom. Last night, the Quora boys fighting for their playoff lives facing YMLA. Well, they got a very big win. Final score 60 to 44. Now they have another must win game. They have a play in matchup with Fox Tech. That game will take place in Lavernia. So it's simple. Win and you're in, lose and you go home. Last time they beat Fox Tech 70 to 45, but they lost in overtime in the first matchup. The end of Cowboys who took first in their district, so of course that means they are the first seed. Well, they get the UC Randolph Rohawks. That game will be at 6:30 on February 20th in the Goliad Gym. We also had some soccer here in the city. The East Girls taking on Miller last night. This right here is a great shot but an even better save for the Miller Buccaneers, but way to stay with it and send it through. One of two goals on the night for Addison Padilla. Lena Colos had four goals. Carolina Bro had one. Ayanna Cooley and Lydia Traxler shut Miller down to just one goal in the game. And the boys, well, they handled their business as well. Isaiah Lopez and Manny Garcia with a goal apiece. Steven Gonzalez knocked two in the back of the net, Jay Nagiri and Pedro Gavina each had assists. Kaysen Jackson and Josh Chaput slammed the door shut at goalkeeper. Also earlier today, the Astros saying that Josh Hader is going to be the closer over Ryan Presley. Hader is the one that they just spent five years, 95 plus million dollars on. So he's going to get the highest of the leverage situations. Don and Karina, back to you. Oh, Zach, I, I found the sports quote of the day. Oh, okay. uh, a lot of people have been making fun uh, on social media of J.J. Uh, Watt's hair, the uh, way his hair looked oh, no. on the pregame show last Sunday from Las Vegas. And J.J.'s quote tonight was, I like it, so I really don't care. <laughs> that, and he dropped the mic. Dropped, yeah, the mic. Dropped the mic. That is J.J. Watt. And he's Go big JJ. enough to uh, stand up for his hair. He's yeah. as big as Texas, That's right. I think. <laughs> All righty, stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 10, we're going to take a last look at your weather with Mac. Plus, we head to a local flower shop in Victoria as they celebrated Valentine's Day. Twenty-eight minutes and thirty-five, thirty-four mm -hmm. seconds. It's Valentine's Day. Yeah, the most popular Valentine's Day gift is flowers. Today is McAdams Floral's busiest day of the year, and already thousands of flowers were sold. Clay Atchison, the owner of McAdams Floral, says that most of the flowers sold today were from last-minute walk-in customers mm -hmm. who were not Bunch. sure what to get. He says they are prepared to help everyone. And I will wait till last minute myself. So we do our best on trying to 
pre-make some things and have things ready and uh, go out the door with them. And even McAdams Floral makes around 500 deliveries on Valentine's Day. There's one of them. Beats the best the advice beans. is to order your flowers a few days before February 14th. Also today, Ash Wednesday, which was met with a full church during the noontime mass at St. Mary's Catholic Church. Father Christopher Fox is the pastor at St. Mary's. He led the Ash Wednesday mass by starting with the first and second readings, followed by the gospel and the blessing of the ashes. Then parishioners walked up the pews to receive the ashes. They are pressed against the forehead in the shape of a cross. And so as we give up different things, things like that, um, let us make sure we do that in a, in a spirit of humility and um, that we rely completely on God. Um, those times when we, we do well, we thank God for that, those times that we fail, that it's even a, a reminder of our great reliance upon God. Lent is observed by many Christian religious communities. It commemorates the 40 days Jesus Christ spent fasting in the desert and enduring temptation from the devil. The three pillars of Lent are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And many people tonight are very happy and blessed that our weather is so much better than it was three, <laughs> three years, years ago tonight, right. the start of the polar plunge mm -hmm. in the crossroads. And, and today's weather is just Bombing. so much better. Perfect. <laughs> It'll be very comfortable. And you know, we were saying uh, the fact that Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day on the same day. It doesn't happen very often. Uh, first time in six years and won't happen again for another five. Exactly, so that's a mm. u unique one. Well, the clouds rolled in and by tomorrow we're gonna start seeing some light rain or drizzle. The heaviest activity is Thursday night into Friday morning. With a little luck, this might all blow out of here by the time we get to Friday night. So your Saturday weekend is gonna be fairly good, a little on the windy side and a little cooler. Only high temperatures in the 50s over the weekend. Thank you, Mac. And finally tonight, Fat Tuesday in New Orleans came to an official close. Aww. When the clock struck midnight, officials ceremoniously ended the revelry of carnival season. Tourists were cleared from the street so cleaning crews could begin the enormous task <laughs> of picking up the trash from the famous roadway that brought thousands to New Orleans during the celebrations. That is one job I would not want. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, do you think they get paid overtime? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and over overtime. <laughs> All righty. Thank you for joining us for 25 News Now at 10. Joining Catalina Asturian and meteorologist Parker Cox for 25 News Now Sunrise starting at 5 a.m. Good night, everybody, and happy Valentine's Day.